Hey, I'm Annie Priest. I play basketball for Farragut, and you're listening to the No Playbook Podcast. All right. Hey, so this is a, a little bit of a Farragut episode on the podcast this week. I got a couple of football players from Farragut. We're going to be putting that out on an episode later this week, so make sure you go ahead, subscribe to the podcast, so you can see that as soon as that uh, episode drops here in a few days. You know, D1 training, we're going to be at the uh, Farragut High School football game on Friday night, so all you got to do is stop by that tent, the uh, D1 booth, mention this podcast, and we're going to give you one free week to D1 training. But today, I've got an outstanding athlete. She's a basketball player at Farragut, Annie Priest. She was a captain on the basketball team last year as a sophomore. That's pretty impressive. So we talk a little bit about that, uh, some of her big and very specific goals for the rest of her high school career, uh, and we talk about the uh, recruiting process as she's just kind of getting started going with that. Speaking of recruiting, you'll actually notice if you are watching the YouTube video uh, for this podcast, you'll see Annie is actually in the ad for Recruit Me, one of our sponsors, as this show is brought to you by Recruit Me, the app, uh, and D1 Training. So I'll get right to that. Let's get to Annie Priest right after this. Sit tight. Recruit Me puts the recruiting process in your hands. Most student athletes wait for college coaches to discover them, but coaches are busy and don't always have the time to find them. Recruit Me allows you to build an online profile to share directly with college coaches and is designed to help you enter all of the information coaches want to see. Your stats, your highlight videos, your academic information, your social links, and more. Plus, our team is here to make sure that your profile stands out with personalized suggestions. With over 25,000 coaches in our database, our premium plan gives you access to D1, D2, D3, and NAIA coaches across the country, and more importantly, gives them access to you. Enter your schedule of games and tournaments to let coaches know when and where you're playing so they can come out and watch you shine. Then communicate with interested coaches via our chat feature. When it comes to recruiting, don't make coaches research you. Do the work for them. Get started today at the Recruit Me app, on the web, and in the app stores. At D1 Training, what we do is in our name. Our D1 athletes become D1 athletes. Whether it's Los Angeles Angels pitcher Ben Joyce, high school soccer national MVP Brindley Murphy, or first-round NFL draft pick Cole Strange, we help all athletes reach their full potential. Five-star training system comes straight from D1 strength and conditioning programs, and D1 has trained over 2,000 professional athletes. Many of them started as young as seven years old. Check out D1Training.com to learn more about their facilities in Hardin Valley and Sevierville, and coming very soon to Maryville and the Tri Cities. So, uh, how was it? So, you're, I mean, you're back, you're back at it. What is this, the second week of school? Yeah, the, or it's the first week. We started on Tuesday and that was a half day. And then, so then we had Wednesday and today. So, that's it. Yeah. Man, my kids started last week in Marathon. Oh, okay. Where do they go to school? So, I mean, my oldest is 13. So, he's at the junior high. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. uh, I mean, Back to school time. I, I remember those days. Has it been a, a smooth one so far, at least? Yeah, it's been good. I really like my classes. Um, and like I have a lot of friends in my classes, so it's good. Yeah. That's always important. Hey, we're actually doing something with Farragut. Um, 865 Academies. Are you familiar with what that is? I I think so. Yeah. It's like well, it's a thing where you have to like basically pick a path. Yes, it's almost yeah. like a okay. major. The, yeah. So the freshman, I was one year before that so my class was the last class that didn't have to do like where you have to pick a a, like pathway or whatever so all the freshmen it's like one I guess they're sophomores now they're all on like the pathway and stuff so yeah so do you don't get to be a part of it at all Mm -mm. well I still like get to pick like I guess so do the kids that are in it they like have like a certain like number of classes that they can pick or like they have to do like a certain path. Like, do you see what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, sort of. And, and and all I really know is that, um, so there's one of the paths is like health yeah. careers. And so D1 is going to be a part of that. So we're oh, like, okay. kids are going to do field trips to D1. And uh, me and uh, Devin Driscoll will we'll like go mm-hmm. to the school to kind of speak about, you know, uh, careers in athletics that aren't being a yeah. pro athlete. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, ours, you, my class is the last one that didn't. We don't have that. Like, oh. We don't get to do that. So yeah. 
Well, I, I was going to use that as a really bad segue into, <laughs> so you are on a path uh, basketball wise. Yeah. It looks like looking at stats, like you're, you're, you're having a, a great career so far, just coming into your junior year. Yeah. Um, so what, like, what was this past year like at Farragut as a sophomore, but still essentially being one of the leaders on the team? Um, honestly, it was really fun. Um, just being, uh, I've been really blessed to be able to be a leader on this team already. I was a captain last year and, um, it was really fun just being able to kind of see, even though like a lot of people would have said last year was a, um, like rebuilding year for us, but really like, it was cool to see us like kind of overcome some of that and like win some games that maybe we weren't like supposed to win, but, um, it was really cool. Um, just being able to be like a part of a team that was able to do better than everybody thought that they were going to. Um, but yeah, last year it was a good year for me. Um, I didn't, I haven't been like scoring as much as I want to, but, um, like my other stats, like assist steals, that was good for me last year, I think. Um, but next year I'll have to transition into more of a scoring role. Yeah. But I mean, still being a captain on a team as a sophomore, is that like, was that, difficult for you or was that just something that you were kind of smooth right into um yeah it was it was a little difficult at first just because um the captains my freshman year were um ace strickland keely rogers and ashton sheridan who are all playing college basketball right now um ace actually at ut so it was a lot it was a big role to fill because they were really they were really good captains and they were really easy to talk to and the really, just really good leaders in general. And, um, so it was a little challenging at first, just kind of scary. Um, but I feel like my other captains, May McNeely and Annalise Bishop really helped me. They were both seniors last year, really helped me kind of come to that role a little more smoothly. And, um, it turned out being a good experience for me. And I thought that, um, I was an okay leader. Like I'm really vocal or I try to be, um, so it turned out to be a lot easier than I thought it was going to be at first, but, um, it, I had, a, it made me, it made it easier for me to like become closer with some of my teammates just because I had to do a lot with them, like as a captain, um, and just kind of lead the team. So it was good for me to like be able to bond with some of the younger players too. So yeah. I honestly really enjoyed it. What about your, uh, like recruiting, you mentioned those players are all in college now. Is that mm-hmm. like, are you focused on getting, to, to play college ball? Yeah, I, um, for a while, I wasn't sure if I wanted to play, but, um, I'm really, the more I think about it, the more I think like, honestly, I've spent all this time playing, like there has to be something more, like I really need to like bring all this and just take it to college. Um, my recruiting, honestly, it's really started this year. I haven't really done anything with or talked to any college coaches, um, until this kind of AAU season. Um, but I've just been, mostly it's just been kind of emailing, um, getting some invites to um, like elite camps. I've only talked to really a couple coaches and we may do some visits in the fall, but I'm honestly really new to the recruiting process and I haven't really done honestly anything with it besides just have a couple conversations with some coaches. So yeah. how does recruit me? Cause you're, you're on the app. I'm, I'm assuming. Yes, yes I am. How does that help? Um, It's honestly really great. I think for um, just athletes like me that are just kind of starting in the recruitment process, because it's like a, just a, a, like in one place where you can put all of your scheduling, your um, highlight reels, all of your academic and just athletic information all into one place. So it makes it super easy to like stay organized and you can just send your quote unquote profile that has all that information into any NCAA coaches. So, um, it just makes it a lot easier for athletes that don't really know where to start like me, (laughs) be able to kind of just get my name out there and like, just talk to coaches that I would be interested in playing for. Have you been like tinkering around with it? Get gotten any, uh, I've been messing with it. Um, I've been playing with it, kind of trying to see like all the different stuff I can put in there. I've uploaded some of my, um, or I did upload my, um, AAU schedule back in the, um, spring and summer. And, um, and honestly, it's been really smooth and it's gone through and everything has been working perfectly. And I get to, it's fun because I get to like, kind of like fill out all my information about like my highlights and like all that stuff. So I've been playing with it a lot. I really enjoy using it. It's really easy to kind of deal with. Now, 
uh, you are anybody watching the YouTube version of this? They they just saw the ad, and that's that's you in the ad. What oh, was that yeah. like be, being a part of that shoot? I guess I don't know. This is kind of cool. I feel like so special. Like I don't. It's <laughs> almost like how in the world am I like the person that's on here? Like that's just so. I don't it's know. a great ad though. It looks it looks good. Oh yeah, I don't know. Um, when we are you talking about like the one that we filmed, like the promo? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was honestly really fun. It was a really cool experience because um, like I had never done anything like that, and when I showed up, they had all these like crazy cameras and lighting and like all this stuff, and I was like, oh my, I feel like I'm like in a movie. Like this is crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah. it was a really cool experience. Um, it was really fun. Now, what is your like top basketball dream? Are you just looking at college right now, or are you you know you got sights set on? I'm coming after Candace Parker's records in the <laughs> WNBA. <laughs> um, my biggest goal, like overall, and just all of basketball, is just to play college anywhere. I mean, any school would be a dream. Um, obviously, playing at the next level is something that a lot of athletes can't do. So, um becoming a college player would just be amazing and just a huge blessing um so that is my main goal but some smaller goals that I've been kind of focusing on um is really to reach a thousand points by my senior year or not by my senior year by the end of my senior year um since I haven't really been a scorer my whole life I think it'd be really cool um to get there and kind of transition into that role because finding a college that they'll be looking for players that are more well-rounded and not just a true point guard and can be able to score at all three levels. So um, scoring a thousand points would be really cool. And I would love to do that by the end of my senior year. Um, so that is another one of my main goals. And then my other like huge goal that I'm really trying to work towards is just being like coming out off the court at the, on my last game as a senior and just feeling like I really put in the work. So obviously it's not really like a goal that I can kind of reach, but um, just finishing high school, knowing that like, I feel good about what I did and I really was the best I could be. So that's, kind I know of that's totally understandable. You, you want to be proud of the work that you did. Yes. And that's something, you yeah. know, like keep, keep that with you your whole career too. Cause that'll, mm -hmm. that'll keep you honest to yourself and always, you know, doing your best yeah. work. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, so what about each game? Are you like a, a, a music before the game to get hype mm -hmm. kind of I, um, I sometimes it kind of depends um so when we have for high school especially when we have games um we always have like a shoot around kind of that happens after school and really what that is is um we just all kind of shoot like we play some music and um we just all kind of shoot like kind of our own shots our own game shots so really I just take that time especially to just kind of I don't really talk I just kind of start getting my mind ready like just being mindful of like what do I need to be thinking about right now? Like visualizing the game, um, just visualizing my shots going in. Um, so it's, I am a music person. I like to listen to music kind of in the background, but really the main thing for me when I'm trying to get like really dialed in and focused for a big game is I really just try to kind of quiet, like make everything around me quiet and just start really being mindful of like my thoughts and just really getting dialed into what just the few things that I want to focus on this game. Like I want to focus on getting to the rim in this game, or like I want to be focused on being a better teammate this game and like making sure I'm high-fiving my teammates everywhere. Just um, I try to dial into like three or four goals that I have for a certain game. So it's really just me trying to make everything around me quiet and just. That's fun. Thoughts. That's, that's almost like a meditative state you're trying to get yes, to. Yes. Yes. That's exactly what I kind of think it is. And, and, and I love this. Cause I'll speak to some, some athletes that are like, you know, I am going whatever Eminem or what Metallica, mm -hmm. whatever it might be to get just crazy hype. And there's mm -hmm. others like, uh, Hendon hooker, uh, and, uh, Jabari small, several other football players. I know, listen mm -hmm. to gospel music. Yeah. They go I have there. heard that. I definitely about Hendon hooker. I did hear that. Yeah. But there's like a meditative state that, uh, that, that you could reach. And, and mm -hmm. I like that setting a couple of goals for yourself mm -hmm. that are super attainable as opposed to just, you know, let's get that heart rate going crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I, Cause I think like in the games, my heart rate's already going to be going crazy and there's going to be loud everywhere. Student section over here is yelling at me about something. Like I'd like to just kind of quiet everything down, just get focused instead of like, Oh, like let's just be go crazy before the game with some crazy music that, I mean, it, 
I can see how it would work, but it doesn't really work for me. What is your favorite music? Um, honestly, country music is my favorite. And that's not really like a typical like get pumped up. Let's listen to like Jason L. Bean before a game. But like I I do love country music. And if I was gonna listen to music before a game, it would have to be country music, probably. <laughs> gotcha. But do you have any any like sports heroes? Um, yeah, I um more I watch more college basketball more than WNBA. So I don't really my my biggest hero is probably Haley Van Lith. Um, just because she's small and I'm small. So um obviously there's a lot of other small players, but just being as good and as powerful of a player as she is with how small she is, um, that's really inspiring to me. Um and she is just a well-rounded like she's just good on both ends of the court and I really like try to model my game after her um she's just I've watched her kind of through college and um I've just been drawn to her I just think she's an amazing player um and I'd love to play like she does and also I'm just really excited to see what she does at LSU I think it's so cool that she's transferring there um so hopefully she does well and everything goes smoothly there but I do really enjoy watching her um and mo- trying to model my game after her so. yeah so you just talking about LSU it, it, it reminded me of something else that I haven't mm-hmm. I didn't mention to you beforehand but obviously Angel Reese uh mm-hmm. I don't even know the name of that other girl that's in uh an ad with her right now mm-hmm. obviously there's Libby Dunn the LSU mm-hmm. female athletes are killing it in the yes. NIL world is uh-huh. that something that you have seen now that it exists in high school that you've got to be a part of so far Mm -hmm. um I haven't seen some of my friends have gotten like um I have a friend at Bradley that their whole entire starting five got an NIL deal um with some sort of local I can't remember what it was now I feel bad um some sort of local business in Bradley and they all got an NIL deal um and I have a friend at Gatlinburg Pittman that actually has an NIL deal with D1 um I think it's the D1 severe Yes, Naya. We yeah, yeah. are really. She was on the friends. podcast too. No way, she was. Yeah, Naya was oh on the podcast uh, a few months ago. Oh yes, I love Naya. She is so sweet, and we are really good friends. We used to play AU together, not this past year, but the year before. Um, but she's a really great teammate, and I loved playing with her. But um, so I have, a, I know a couple of people that have had nil deals. I actually haven't had one myself, but um, she, I love to just see. Like it's, I think it's crazy that like high schoolers can get nil deals now not crazy like and I think it's crazy in a good way like because all these high schools are putting in so much work and and they can out get recognized for it and get a little money for it so yeah yeah I'm definitely on the side of the athletes it's a it's a fun thing for you know good old boys to argue about at the water cooler about you know the the way things were when they were kids but that doesn't mean that that it was right that athletes and like a truly dedicated athlete these days has to really dedicate a lot of time to their craft if they want a chance at advancing like you can't have time to go work at cvs five days or five hours after school which is what i did um like but but still like i wasn't able to train and get myself to to where i wanted to be you want that chance to really excel then you you really got to put the time in and that's what happens like i just saw downstairs like a, a football player, he's Eli Owens. I'll tell you, he was on the podcast recently. He is uh, an upcoming junior at Alcoa. Already got offers for Ohio State, Alabama, Wisconsin, Tennessee, Michigan, you name it. Uh, but still, even during the week, he is coming here. Like he's got a football game probably this weekend, and he's still coming here to put in that extra time. He doesn't have time to work. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why I think like. Um, it's a cool opportunity for you to make a little bit of money because you're putting in all this blood, sweat, and tears mm-hmm. into your no sport time. that's going for the school. So, I I'm on I'm on uh, I'm on the side of the athlete with this one. Yeah, me too, <laughs> for sure. Um, you know, uh, so you know that I know your mom. Did I see? Do you all go to down to 30A? Yes, we were just there like last week. Yeah, w- which beach did you go to on 30A? Um, we were at um seagrove so it was like i guess it's like a little bit east of like seaside watercolor i think oh yeah so that's our seagrove market's one of my favorite place places 
Oh, I don't think I've ever been there. Steve yeah, so it's like a little nest. So it used to be like an old school uh, restaurant. It felt like you're going in a gas station, but the food was delicious and they had to uh, update it. So they've updated the building and now it's, it is still a small restaurant, but you go there, mm-hmm. get a grouper sandwich and it's, it's one of the Brilliant. best. You know, and it, it's one of the couple places that we have to go every time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's kind of for us. We always have to go to um, Great Southern in seaside you know what I'm talking about? oh yeah every time we go down there like we got to go to great southern one night mm-hmm. yeah yeah my wife and i've actually uh honeymooned in seaside oh, really? um, and on our first night getting there i i'd never been to that area and our first night uh, that's we went to the great southern cafe yeah it's so good it's my favorite restaurant like it is yeah. so good now how about off the court uh what other hobbies do you have um I really love just like spending time with my friends, obviously, but I have two French vlogs at home that are like my best friends and I love hanging out with them whenever I can playing with them. Um, and I also really like to cook. So I kind of cook whenever I can. I usually don't like cook on my own, but I love to help my mom. Like whenever we make food at home, like for dinner, I just love to kind of help around the kitchen, like learn a few things. She's a really good cook. So she's good at teaching me too. So I, no. but, um, and I love to bake too. So, okay. So I want to ask you about that. Is that just because baking with mom around the house was fun or did you like come to this love because of food network shows? Um, honestly, it's just been like it's cooking with my mom. I used okay. to watch that one show, um, worst cooks in America. Mm-hmm. So, and I, I think it's, I don't know if they still play. I used to watch it like on Netflix, but, um, I guess that's kind of like the opposite, but like, I, I always just watch that and I'm just like, how do these people like, this is so bad. Like, how do these people not know? But I guess it's just because I've always just grown up in the kitchen with my mom. But she really has always just kind of inspired me to be a good cook because she's always been like the best cook, like the best food comes from home, I swear. Um, So she's, but yeah, she just kind of taught me my love for, for cooking and I just really enjoyed yeah. it. So. So I, I used to watch, um, I was the marketing manager for Food Network for a long time. And that's that's oh, one wow. of the things I was, I was wondering if we grabbed a hold of you because my kids love the show Kids Baking uh-huh. Challenge Championship, Kids Baking Championship. And uh, I mean, it's like young kids, like nine-year-olds will get on there and they can bake this yes. amazing thing. And, and I just was impressed with the ability. So I didn't know if maybe that had grabbed your attention early. Yeah, I I do watch some Food Network shows sometimes, but I haven't really been like caught on one where I like watch every episode. But um, I do enjoy watching them when they're on. Right on. Well, a couple questions that I ask everybody before I let you go. What is your favorite workout exercise? Now, that could be anything, anything you do to get in shape. It could be just uh, a shooting exercise for basketball, or it could be hitting the gym and doing squats. Um, honestly, my favorite way, like just getting in shape is I like to go to, um, just like my kind of local gym and just kind of like put my AirPods in either like run on the treadmill, get on the elliptical, um, and just do like kind of my own little strength workout or cardio workout that I just kind of put together. Um, because sometimes when I'm in like a big group, I kind of get like stressed out. Like if sometimes we have team workouts, um, and sometimes it stresses me out because I'm like, I'm kind of like comparing myself. I'm like, oh, they're lifting so much more than me or like they're doing so much better than me. So I like to kind of just kind of be by myself, um, just hop on the treadmill and just kind of walk or run for a while. And um, it kind of is slow if I'm walking, like it's kind of slow to get in shape. But if I like I try to stay consistent and um, that is especially what I need to be doing right now to get in shape for basketball season coming up. Um, but I do also enjoy working out, um, when I do work out in a group, we go to see, um, Mason Burks who trains, um, he has a little training gym right by the Cotton Eye Joe. And, um, that's more, we do more strength workouts with him, but I really enjoy working out with him. He is like the best trainer ever. And, um, he's really helped me since my freshman year and I've gotten a lot stronger. So I do enjoy working out with him too. All right. Good. And one last question that I ask everybody. Give me one great sports memory for you. And it can be, I'll let you choose as a spectator or as an athlete. Um, 
Okay, this is kind of, I don't know, I guess this is, this is my greatest memory, but it might sound kind of stupid, but um, my freshman year, we were playing Bearden at home, so this is when I was playing with um, these, all these college basketball players, I was the sixth man, um, so this was like the greatest team in Farragut history, like it was a, the biggest deal to me that I was in the game at this time, but we were playing Bearden, um, and it was the fourth quarter, and we were probably down like maybe six or so. And, um, a Strickland was at, um, kind of half court, like on the left side, we were on offense and she had the ball and I was on the, in the right corner and I kind of back cut like behind the whole defense. And she made like a cross court pass to me. And I had like an and one layup. And as a freshman in the bearding game, I thought this was the craziest thing. I was like, oh my gosh, like fourth quarter, I had an and one, like the whole gym went crazy. Like it was the biggest deal to me. Like I went back and watched the video probably a hundred times. So I was like, oh my gosh, I did that. <laughs> and spoiler, we lost the game. And another spoiler, I missed the free throw, but it was still the biggest. I, I thought it was the craziest moment. I was like, yeah. I contributed. I think that was my only two points of the whole game. But I was like, I actually contributed to this game as a freshman. I thought it was really cool. So that's, that's great. Fun. I love that. I hope that that sticks with you for a long time. Annie Priest, yeah. thank you so much for your time. Best of luck this season. And uh, uh, thanks for joining me. Oh, thank you so much.